That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Ground control to Major Listen, uh, Tom. Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Ground control to Major Tom. Hi, David Bellman here, Bellman Jewelers, and I'm here with my good friend Bobby Livingston, who has probably one of the rarest watches in the world right here on our desk for five minutes because then it's going to go back into the vault. So thank you very much for giving us this rare opportunity because I'm really excited about having this watch here in our presence. Well, it's amazing, David. As you know, it's the only watch that you could own that was on the lunar surface. All, all the other watches that the astronauts wore when they were moonwalking were Omega Speedmasters, yeah. and those were officially bought by the government, so they're all government property and in the National Collection in Washington. Mm -hmm. So this was a backup watch uh, that was used by astronaut Dave Scott when his Omega Speedmaster failed. The really? crystal, the, the, is it a hazelite crystal? Yes. Popped off somehow, we don't know how, yeah. but when he returned after his second moonwalk, he retrieved his backup watch, took the strap off the Omega, and this is the strap that was actually on the lunar surface for all three spacewalks. Wow. And that's a pretty amazing artifact in itself. But the Bull of a Chronograph, which was made by the Bull of a Company uh, in their attempt to get an American-made watch on the lunar surface, uh, this is the only one that really exists, and it's the only one that you can own that was on the moon. I understand that this also is a one-off watch, that they never made this model again. They just made it this one time. So it's a one-of-a-kind watch that's been on the moon and brought back and then can be purchased in, as a private auction with RR auctions. That's correct. General Omar Bradley, who was a famous general, if you, I don't know if you remember the movie Patton, but Carl Malden played yeah. it. So he was a fierce World War II uh, general, a proud American. He became president of the Boulevard Watch Company. And because Omega had won the contract, uh, NASA told Boulevard, we don't need a chronograph. Well, Omar Bradley wasn't going to listen to that. and he. May, had this watch produced, tested it against the Omega Speedmaster, mm -hmm. felt it outperformed the Omega Speedmaster, and wanted to get a watch, as he said, on the uh, on our boys while they walk on the moon and get that foreign-made watch off of their arms. Wow. So this is the watch that Omega, um, this is the watch that Bulova made to compete with the Omega Speedmaster. But it, because uh, they never, um, because Bulova never was told that it was actually used on the lunar surface, uh, there was never an opportunity for Bulova. I see. Wow. Now, it's, it's so amazing to have it here. And I know, again, one of the rules is you're the only person allowed to actually touch the watch. The astronaut told you that that, that was part of the conditions of all this and also keeping it in this literal fortress of a security area. He won't let anybody else touch it but you. And what, what are some of the conditions that he put on you with regards to the security? Well, we've been uh, working with the astronauts since about 2011, and Commander Scott uh, trusts us as material. We sold his uh, hand controller, his joystick that he landed on the moon with for $600,000, and this is worth more. So he asked me when he uh, brought it here from, uh, and brought it to the fortress here in Boston that nobody touches it, nobody examines it, and, uh, except for, for me, uh, and then the future buyer. Right. So. Um, that's that was the conditions, and we keep it uh, locked up here in this high security uh, vault. Uh, insurance requires it, the astronaut requires it, and yep. uh, we sleep well at night knowing that the watch is safely secure. It's the most expensive item I've ever uh, held in my hands. Oh, that's amazing! Because I know you've had some amazing Civil War documents and some, in fact, a, a unique piece from uh, the White House I saw recently. Uh, a little piece from the original White House that's that was uh, survived from the. Uh, the fire. Yeah, we sold that uh, in uh, September 2015 for almost $150,000. So, as I said, this watch is so hard to put a price on because it, it crosses over. We have great space collectors that yep. pay hundreds of thousands of dollars for things that were on the moon, and then you would know more than me about watch collectors. Uh, why a watch like this would uh, appeal to someone who collects watches. Well, you can even, even by itself to have a watch that was just a one-off as you described it, you know, and to compete with Omega so that Bulova could prove that they could make this watch and did it just one time and that it still existed, let alone the fact that it's been on the moon and back again. That's absolutely incredible. You're right. I think the aesthetics of the watch are gorgeous. These pushers are unlike the Speedmaster, and I've never seen it, you know, just they have that kind of space age design, yeah. uh, unlike the, the pushers that were on the Speedmaster, just the slim, a cool kind of Cadillac. Pusher uh, is 
absolutely an American feature, don't you think? Well, yeah, and you know what? Now that we're talking about it, because you know, when I saw this strap and I realized how long it was, and I thought it was really strange. But then you on the glove, that it yeah, had to go on this giant spacesuit, right? Yeah, and I'm like, ah, yeah. oh, okay, well that makes sense. But Kat, can you imagine the buttons that are typically on the watch? Are these little tiny round buttons? Right. How are these guys going to press it with a spacesuit on? Yet I bet you could push those buttons right. with a spacesuit. I have never seen it, but some of the documents I've seen uh, is that Bulova actually did a comparison with this watch, the Speedmaster, and submitted it. Uh, in trying to get this watch on the moon. So uh, I would love to see those documents and see the differences oh between an Omega Speedmaster and the Bull of a Chronograph. Uh, incredible. This one is special because uh, it's the only watch you can own that walked on the moon with a moonwalker. And it's got some, uh, the crystal. Yes. I think another feature, watch feature I find is fascinating is the way the crystal is elevated up off the watch. Uh, I think the, it, it's, a, it's a glass crystal, uh, I believe, which is different again from the Speedmaster. So mm -hmm. some of these features are absolutely unique. I think it's fabulous. No, it, it is. It, it's a, uh, and you know how much I love history. And then to find again another unique history, you know, historical piece that's jewelry related yeah. and, and letting us be a part of it is really a thrill. I just want to thank you very much for yeah, giving us, me and uh, my customers and viewers this opportunity. Of course, David. You're always our expert on these things. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ground control to Major Tom. Ground control to Major Tom.